When we're faced with bad situations, when people are treating us poorly, usually it's about us in a victim mentality type of way. It's about, oh, they were so mean to me. Wah. What am I going to do now? This is horrible. It will go from that to, yeah, they were mean to me. Now what am I going to do? Now how am I going to respond? Now how am I going to grow and learn the lesson in this situation to better myself for myself? Hi, my name is Essie and today we're going to be talking about how to take heartbreak and rejection and not let it defeat you, but to have it be your superpower to give you strength and learn lessons. Today's society is going to tell you that haters are going to hate and that you just need to brush off what they say, which is partly true, but we lose so much of the value of mean people and mean words when we totally disregard them because haters still have working functioning brains that address parts of ourselves that might actually need changing despite them cussing us out or criticizing in a really really mean way but the truth is it's never gonna get easier life is full of harsh things suffering mean people it's a fight to be here and if we don't pick ourselves up and get better every single day we're gonna stay the loser that we've always been we have to get rid of this victim mentality. We have to stop thinking that people owe us something or that they did this wrong, they said this wrong, they were mean, so we don't have to listen to them. We have to stop thinking that way. We have to realize that the only person who really is gonna consistently care about us is us and God. So you make the difference between learning these lessons and growing from the hatred and heartbreak and rejection or just staying where you are and actually becoming more and more defeated by it. So it's like, okay, how do we do that? How do we face rejection and heartbreak and contradiction and really mean stuff without being crushed by it? The whole crux of the issue is that we need to be able to listen to people say things about us without taking what they say as the definition of us. People's response to us and our actions is their responsibility. So if someone cusses you out, if someone cheats on you, lies to you, stabs you in the back, that's because of who they are. Okay, even Jesus was betrayed by two of his best friends and Jesus was perfect. People betray people because of who they are, not because of the person who they betrayed is. And we need to define who we are and what we think of ourselves by the content of our character, by what we know to be true inside of ourselves. Who did God make you to be? What is the truth of God's word? What is the truth that you know inside of yourself? That's what defines you. Like in high school, my boyfriend cheated on me and like many people knew about it and it was horrible and I totally loved the guy, even though we were young and stupid, whatever. That was one of the hardest times in my life and I took that time to dive into who I was in Christ. I didn't tell anybody but God and I grew so much with him because he showed me that I could be this person or a certain type of person without anyone else. I didn't need my boyfriend. I didn't even need my family even though they loved and supported me. I just needed God and he showed me that I could stand upon him in the face of all these trials. So I didn't let it define me. I didn't take his betrayal and say, oh, well, I'm not worth, you know, someone being loyal to me. No. When people cheat, it's because they have problems. Hurt people hurt people, right? So if you get hurt, that's because someone else has a problem. And just like me, you can take these opportunities of heartbreak and sadness. Like, yeah, feel it. It's okay to feel sad, but share it with God because he cares and he's interested in how you feel and he can help you through that. He can be there with you. So if you can hear someone criticize you and hear their opinion of you and realize, oh, that isn't true at all and oh, that's not what I meant to get across, you can actually see that like, okay, obviously uh, we have a misunderstanding here or I've behaved in a way that to this person speaks towards this character. You can actually learn from it and not take it to heart and not actually think like, well, they say I'm this, therefore I am. You can think, what was my role in this negative situation and how can I improve? And this isn't about like improving to maintain relationships with these toxic people. This is about self-worth. This is about self-improvement and your own pride. Are you going to become someone who is respectable and mature enough to actually still tune into that and think, okay, the haters still have a point, even if they're really acting out of line here. And this really gets us out of our comfort zone because we have to stop thinking about all this butterfly fluffy stuff the culture throws at us today. We have to stop thinking about self-love so much and think more about self-improvement. We need to let go of what other people are doing. 
We need to have proper boundaries and realize that I am me and they are them, right? So they can be that person who throws people under the bus and criticizes and is toxic and just continues to lie and cheat and stab people in the back and gossip. They can be that, okay? We accept it, that's fine. We don't need to tell people what to do or how to be. But I don't have to be that. I don't have to think that way. I don't have to continue to live under that toxicity. And once we do start to learn from these experiences, we can really start to identify how they come about and avoid them. We can start to identify these toxic people because we've analyzed these experiences. We think about how did this happen? What was my role in it? What it, Do they have trauma that they need to deal with? Why did this happen? That way you can identify toxic people right away and get out of relationships that you shouldn't be in. We should surround ourselves with people who are safe, people who we want to be like people who want to be around us and like us also in the same vein people we surround ourselves with should be people who can tactfully lovingly tell us hey this thing that you're doing is probably going to hurt you criticism is not the problem people who criticize in a violent horrible hurtful way is the problem that's a problem okay but criticism is a tool criticism is the way that we grow the Bible says that iron sharpens iron. We should not be afraid of criticism or confrontation or um, aggressive interactions like that where people are just openly talking to each other about like, hey, this hurt my feelings. And the other person should be like, oh, well, tell me more. I, I don't want to hurt your feelings. How can I avoid that in the future? The reason people avoid confrontation and criticism in general, which is really bad, but the reason they do it is because they're insecure. They don't have the tools to work through confrontation. Most people just freak out and go on the attack. Even passive people, once they're pushed to a certain limit, they just attack, get away from me, ah! Um, and that's really destructive. And it all stems from not having the tools and the skills to handle confrontation and criticism. But once we're grounded and we know who we are because of looking at ourselves, and seeing the way that we act and understanding why we do these things. Looking at our own heart and seeing our intentions and saying like, oh yeah, those are good intentions and I need to try to express them the best way that I can, regardless of how they're received, we'll know that we were coming from a good place and it might need work and that's fine, you know? So knowing yourself, knowing the truth of yourself and actually being someone with good intentions. We can't say that we're confident when we have nothing to be confident about. We need to be accomplishing things, you know, actually getting off of our butt and going to work, spending time with God, growing. These are all things that can help grow our confidence, but we're not going to have confidence and be able to face confrontation or heartbreak and all these negative things if we don't have confidence in who we are. The desire to learn the lesson and to grow because of it is going to push us into those deep, dark places where the lesson can be discovered and realized. We have to become acquainted with failure. We have to try new things and fail, literally. People think like, oh, let's try it and hopefully I won't fail. What if you do? That's, that's still a win because once we fail enough, we'll convince ourselves that we can live through it. We won't be afraid of failure. We'll be like, oh, I am strong enough for this. That's the only way you can convince yourself that you actually are a strong person. You can't rely on yourself if you've never proven yourself to yourself. So go outside, find people who you want to be like, get a mentor. Look at your friends. Are they who you wanna be in 10 years? Your friends are basically who you are. And if it's not exactly who you are right now, it's who you're gonna be. So maybe we need to make some changes so that our life is actually going in the direction we want. You might need to get a pen and paper and write down, okay, in a year from now, write down what you wanna do, what you wanna be. Where do you want to be? Who do you wanna be with? How do you wanna feel about yourself? And then compare it to how you feel and what you're doing right now. How do the two match up and what changes need to take place so that you can get from here to here? We keep thinking that like, oh yeah, I have my whole life. I'll do it tomorrow. But then tomorrow's always tomorrow and it's never today. Until you get tomorrow to today, we never actually do anything. The growing has to start today and has to take place every day or else it's gonna be 20 years down the line and we haven't done anything and nothing has changed. And the only person whose fault it's gonna be is our own. 
No one is going to help you do this. No one is going to push you. And even if they are pushing you towards being a better person, they're going to give up when you continue to not listen to their advice. So pick up a self-help book. If you need to, go to therapy. It's not something to be ashamed of. There are very real and deep hurts that need to be dealt with, and trauma is a serious thing that affects many facets of life. People are trained to help you with this. So go talk to someone. Read a book. Listen to a podcast. Learn from other people who've gone before you. You are not by yourself, but you are the only person who can do the work. So many of us spend so much time on our phones thinking about other people or watching TV or consuming media in general when we really need to know ourselves. And we think that we do because we live inside of ourselves. I am myself, but we really don't. We don't on a level we actually think about. Like, what's your personality type? Do you know? It probably would be helpful. Do you have ADHD? Maybe. Learning these things and the labels can actually help us to find tools under these labels to grow and be better. So don't be afraid of the labels. Don't be afraid of thinking about yourself. Think about why do I behave this way? And for myself, I really take pride in my health. I try to eat healthy and exercise when I can. And this gives me confidence that I can control myself. I can control my body. I, if I can control what I eat, then I can kind of control what I say and what I think and how I feel about myself because it's all connected. Having discipline in one area of your life will also trickle into the other area because it's kind of the same muscle. And anger issues are probably more difficult and challenging to control than what you eat or when you exercise. So start with these things and work up to this. Like in my own life, I really try to be mindful of what I eat specifically because it really helps me spiritually to have self-control when it comes to temptation and doing the right thing in situations. If I've been practicing and having self-control in the kitchen, then it's much easier to have self-control when I talk to people or even when I don't want to talk to people because I'm a shy person. Have self-control and push yourself. Once we stop listening to the haters, our personal growth takes a downfall. Part of personal growth, a huge part, is being teachable. And that's not only being teachable by people we like and enjoy and actually are trying to help us, but also from people who are complete jerks being really mean. So I want you to try to change something about yourself and your life today. How can you take your sadness and heartbreak and turn it into something you can learn from? It might be, oh, I got cheated on because I didn't give enough time to my significant other because I'm on my phone all the time and I'm addicted. It might be this person cussed me out and responded way crazy because even though I didn't intend to be irritating this person this entire time, I was. Or this person freaked out on me and cussed me out because I was using a bad tone and I pissed them off. So think through your experiences and yourself. And I want you to find at least one thing that you can learn from from the past and improve yourself today. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this information helped you and I will see you in the next video.